Good evening. Welcome to second edition of Amazon AI Conclave. I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very excited to have you all here. And now without further ado let me invite Navdeep Manakthala head of business development for India to address the gathering. Thank you Polly. Uh, for those of you not familiar Polly is a deep learning based uh, text to speech service. Uh, I hope you noticed Andy Jassy in the video earlier he talked about uh, this is absolutely an exciting time to be in uh, and I strongly believe that it's can't get better. So let's look at AI. AI is clearly the new electricity, right? So if you look at why is it the new age of AI that we talk about? Two big things are that we are seeing. One is data, access to tremendous amounts of data. So if you look at the amount of data that is being generated today, it is 2.5 quintillion. A quintillion is a billion billion bytes of data are being generated every day. And this is only going to grow. So if you look at by 2020, the prediction is that 1.7 MB of data is going to be generated per second per inhabitant on this planet. So the access to tremendous amounts of data is one. The second, what, what was the big challenge? The challenge was access to compute power to be able to process that data, right? So now what's, what's possible with the cloud? Access to easy and cost effective access uh, to compute power. So if you look at GPU instances, we have something called the P3 instances. Now a P3 instance can give you up to one petaflop, one petaflop of performance per instance. And you can chain a bunch of them together, right? Now as a reference point, let's look at Param. All of you are familiar with Param, India supercomputer? They had the UVAR2 series between 2013 and I think 2016. Now a UVAR2 series gave you a performance of 0.5 petaflops. So I'm talking about a single instance giving you one petaflop, right? And then on the other side, you had a supercomputer like Param, the UVAR2 series giving you 0.5 petaflops. So that's changed. That's changed the whole game, that's changed the whole dimension for AI. So if you look at electricity about 100 years ago, it changed everything. Now if you ask me today, I really can't think of a single industry that AI and ML will not transform going forward. So what are we trying to do in this? We are trying to essentially put machine learning in the hands of every developer. If you look at Amazon as a company, we've been deeply invested in machine learning over the last 20 plus years, right? A lot of the experiences that you get as a consumer and a lot of the process internally are powered by AI and ML. So let's start with when you go to Amazon.in or Amazon.com, the recommendations engine is again based on ML, right? If you look at the robots within our fulfillment centers and the routes that they take to kind of pick objects and put them together and carry them across, again, basis, the optimized path is based on machine learning. If you, look at, uh, if you look at capacity planning, if you look at forecasting, the whole supply chain piece, again, a strong play of AI and ML. If you look at Alexa, what's happening there? It's deep learning again, deep learning based ASR and NLU that's powering that. If you look at the Prime Air Drones Initiative, again, deep learning there, right? Autonomous, autonomously flying drones to deliver goods for you. And if you look at Amazon Go, which is our new format retail, where you kind of walk in, pick up the items that you want, and there is no checkout, again, based on computer vision. So we've got thousands of engineers across the company who are working on machine learning, and it's a strong part of our legacy. So what are we trying to do at AWS? At AWS, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to address the hardest problems uh, that are kind of stopping ML being available in the hands of every developer. And that's why we have the broadest and deepest set of uh, AI services, which Olivia will talk about uh, in a second right after this in his keynote. Now, if you look at an AI stack, again, um, Olivia will talk about it in detail. We look at our stack in, as across three layers. At the top of it, you have the AI services, which is basically pre-trained AI services which is available, targeted at you know, application developers who without any machine learning expertise can in integrate intelligence into their apps and into their processes. So if you look at the AI services, we have uh, services across vision. So you, we have image and video recognition. Then you have language-based services, basically voice, conversational agents, translation, transcription, document analysis, advanced text analysis. And then you have forecasting and recommendation, right? So that's one layer of it. Uh, if you get to the next layer, basically that's the ML services. Uh, so the ML services are targeted machine learning developers and machine learning data engineers. Now here uh, we have SageMaker. How many of you have heard of SageMaker here? Okay, that's interesting. So SageMaker is our managed service which allows uh, ML developers and engineers to quickly and easily put, build, train and deploy machine learning models. 
Now, given it's a machine, given it's a managed service, the whole guesswork and undifferentiated heavy lifting at every step of the machine learning process essentially gets eased out, and you can successfully implement use cases across industries. So, for example, Capital One uses us for real-time fraud analytics. There are companies who use us for determining the, uh, the biological impact of new drugs that they are launching. Uh, uh, in sports, it's being used to determine outcomes of various sports. So that's the second level. The, the foundational level is basically the ML frameworks uh, and the infrastructure. So we're not going to confine you to any particular framework. We are cognizant of the fact that frameworks are rapidly evolving. You'll have different frameworks for different use cases. So you can choose uh, TensorFlow. You can choose uh, Apache MXNet. You can choose Py PyTorch. You can choose from a whole lot of other prominent frameworks, and we make that easily available to you. And on the infrastructure side, we have a broad set of compute options. So whether you want to take GPUs for uh, compute intensive deep learning, or whether you want to take uh, uh, hardware, if you want to take FBGAs for accelerated uh, scenarios, or then you want to take memory intensive compute instances, all of that is available to you. And we don't leave it there. We don't only leave it at these three layers. So we have a concept called the Amazon Machine Learning Labs. We talked about it last time also, but what's interesting is it's significantly uh, evolved since then. We work with customers to, to solve the hardest and most complex problems. So that is where our teams come in, and these teams also comprise of data scientists. So they will come in, they will have, they will have hands-on educational sessions with you, and they will work with you to build your algorithms uh, and kind of take them to production. So that's what uh, we do with the ML framework uh, that we have. Then we also have uh, the uh, research program. So there, we, what we do is the research awards program. Uh, in that case, we fund universities, faculty, postdoctoral students in terms of novel work that is being done in machine learning. Uh, and then we have the Amazon ML University, uh, where we have training and certification programs. So it's the same content that our developers use internally that is being made available uh, broadly. Now, let's come to uh, reInvent. So reInvent is our annual congregation of customers and partners. Uh, we had it two weeks back. Uh, it's usually held in Las Vegas in the US. Uh, what's interesting is that we made 95 plus announcements at this event, and 13 of them were around machine learning. And Olivia is going to talk about all the exciting stuff, so I won't take his thunder away from him, but there's a lot of announcements there. And what's also exciting is that there were some in very, very interesting things and directions that we started to take. So for example, we announced a, a custom chip for ML inference. Uh, we announced a 1 by 18 scale an autonomous car to get developers going with reinforcement learning. Right? So those are some of the interesting directions that we are taking. And if you look at the announcements that we have made in machine learning over the last 12 months, uh, it's 200 plus. So 200 plus launches in terms of machine learning over the, over the last 12 months alone. Now, if you look at where machine learning is, ha is happening, we are very averse to giving out a lot of statistics. But two interesting ones that we gave out recently was that if you look at deep learning projects in the cloud, 80% plus of those are happening on AWS. And if you look at TensorFlow, TensorFlow projects in the cloud, 85% of them are happening on AWS. Right? So this brings us to customers who are using us for machine learning in different scenarios. So you have Haptic, uh, who uses us for personalized uh, reminders, your policy bazaar, their personalized notifications, call outs to their customers, your Shadi, which uses it for image moderation, and a whole bunch of other, Woo, which is India's uh, largest dating service. So a whole lot of interesting work across industries, across use cases uh, that, that, that's being, being built off AWS. So coming to the AI Conclave, this is the second year we are doing it. Um, it is by far the most comprehensive congregation of the AI ecosystem in India. There's a bunch of events that are now happening on AI and ML across the country. But what we found was that most of them were catering to one or two or three Segment. So there was something for developers and engineers. There was something for somebody else. So here what the aim is to bring together developers, bring together engineers, bring together the business folks, and also bring together, for example, the investors, and bring together the startups themselves who are building all of this out. Uh, so over the course of today and tomorrow, uh, we will have 10 keynotes. And there's a very interesting panel, which I will talk about in a second, uh, where we'll talk about real life use cases of AI and ML. Um, we also have the awards this year. What's interesting is that we have, uh, for the first time, uh, Alexa categories of awards. So we will get to that at the, uh, at the end of the evening. Um, and uh, we had an intense debate amongst the jury on a number of awards. And I think it was a very interesting discussion for some of the sessions that I was privy to. 
Uh, we have a number of our global experts here, uh, down here, uh, from the engineering teams, from the product teams. So they are going to spend sessions with startups uh, in across, uh, you know, we're going to have round tables, we have one-to-one -one sessions. Uh, so they're going to spend time. So as for the Alexa team, um, we also have an interesting showcase. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please do look at it in the break. Uh, we have 14 of our partners exhibiting outside across various use cases. Uh, some very interesting uh, use cases being uh, displayed. And then we have three very interesting uh, AWS demos and an Intel demo. Uh, so I, if you have not got a chance to see the AI-infused augmented reality demo, you absolutely must see. Uh, we have an auto-parking car. We have a robot car across a racetrack, which kind of runs itself. Um, tomorrow, we also have an Investor Connect session. So the unique thing here is that we're going to have a bunch of curated startups come to present uh, to about 10 or 11 venture capital funds. So it's a session where we bring all of them together. They get to make their pitches, uh, and then they decide to, uh, how to take it forward. We have business and technical tracks across today and uh, tomorrow. And like I said, you get a chance to engage with experts. These are some of the customer booths out there. I'm not going to talk about their use cases because I uh, don't want to see, steal the thunder, but lots of interesting use cases out there. I talked about the, the demo. The Sumerian one is particularly interesting because it's in a glass, so you can see through the glass, and there is an augmented reality image with it, and then we use AI to power the engagement with you, both in terms of computer vision and text-to-speech. Uh, we have a robocar, as I talked about, and then smart parking. Uh, a big thank you to our jurors who spent a lot of time here with us today and with these startups. I think this is really important uh, because uh, one of the points I'd like to talk about is that why are we doing this? One is this is the largest aggregation of uh, the AI and ML ecosystem, but we're doing it for two or three reasons. One is to bring all every, the ecosystem together. Uh, the second one is that we still feel that all the work that is going on in AI and ML in India is not being adequately showcased. So the idea here is to showcase a lot of the work that is going on. And in terms of the jury today, uh, the companies that pitched to them were Series A or, or earlier. So we are looking at emerging startups in the AI and ML space. Uh, and the third one is to overall kind of increase the awareness and adoption of AI and ML. So that's the broad objective here. So in terms of the jury, prominent faces, I don't want to call of them out because you would know all of them. but. Uh, we, had the, we had GSF, uh, we had uh, Intel, we had Axel, we had Pi Ventures, we had Kotak Mahindra Bank, we had Twitch. So an interesting uh, jury and loved being part of that discussion. Uh, we have a panel uh, right after Olivier's keynote uh, that is going to talk about business use cases of AI. These are leaders coming from the industry and talking about how they have deployed AI and ML in their in their businesses and the impact that's having. So I'm really looking forward to that panel. And a big thank you to, the, to our partners who've kind of helped us put this together uh, for a second year in a row. Uh, so big thank you to Intel, Axel, Accenture, and your story. And then a, ho a whole lot of ecosystem partners uh, that are mentioned here. Uh, so thank you and enjoy the rest of today and tomorrow. Please stay back definitely for the award session. And it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Olivia Klein, who heads emerging technologies for us for APEC.